uh, 4.31, so I'm going to start the panel. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Quick note, um, I heard some talk about the Pacific Northwest for a Discord server. Um, I've helped run it for almost four years now. So if you're interested in joining, that is our vanity URL. Just putting it up there. FYI, if you're interested, you know, um, so that is an opportunity. I'll be putting it up at the end of the panel too, so no rush. Uh, okay, thank you for coming. There are so many of you. Let's see, people in the back, if you want seats, I think there are seats. Yeah, so I'm gonna get started. Um, yeah, so I'm Tabby, nice to meet all of you. I've been involved in the fandom since 20, let's see, yeah, early 2018. My first convention was from India 2018. I'm very excited. Um, I'm from Seattle, born and raised. Anyone else from Seattle? Can we get a little, a little noise? All right, okay. okay. Um, I'm casually moving this MS painting off the screen. Great, I'm doing great, all right. Um, small icebreaker, because I have a lot of time to kill. <laughs> uh, who here thinks they're from the furthest away? All right, okay, I'd like to hear, where are you from? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., okay, that's pretty far, what about you? Orlando, Florida. Orlando, oh, thank you, my God, you, yeah, maybe has you beat, but still. All right, that's exciting. Um, this is my first time hosting a panel. I'm a little bit nervous, um, but I'll be... thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is my guest panelist, Felix. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, I'm Alfo from Seattle, born yeah. and raised. Been yeah. in the furry fandom since 2013, and the first Anthro Northwest was my first furry convention. So I've been here every year and happy to be back here again. Yeah. yeah. Yes, round of applause. Yes. Um, yeah, so I have Felix, here's a guest panelist. Felix will be speaking at the end of the panel. Um, our friend Reed is also coming. Oh, uh, okay, we're good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool, and then uh, Reed will be coming around 5 p.m., so if you see, when, see someone walk through and come up, that's expected, don't worry about it. Not a hostile takeover. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Um, all right. So what is a fursona? Um, it is a wee bit complicated. I think you could ask anyone in the fandom and they would give you a different answer. Um, I could start the panel off with like the Merriam-Webster definition. Um, if you want like a, yeah, if you wanted to call back to the very unfortunate high school essay, I'm not going to do that. Um, fun fact, there is actually a Merriam-Webster definition about what a fursona is. I learned that like last night as I was crunching this presentation. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can. Um, so common definitions, I think it really depends on who you ask, but generally, a fursona is like a representation of you. Um, generally, it is an animal of some sort, whether that be fantasy, original species, I'll get into that later, or a hybrid. Um, some people kind of stretch the We're not gonna get into what a furry is. That's way too, that'd be like a whole two hour panel. But generally, it's like an animal-like thing or creature that represents you. Um, for example, Uh, yeah, that's okay. yeah. And so, um, yeah, someone could be like this cool rainbow dog with massive pecs and it's me <laughs> and it represents how I see myself. Or it could be um, an ide ideal version of someone you'd like to be. For example, you know, um, maybe you're really shy, but you want to portray yourself as someone who's super outgoing. And so someone could say, you know, um, I don't really get out of my shell much, but my persona is like this purple gecko. He has a really great social life. He's really good at making friends and that's who he is. And so um, the third option, um, or one of the most common things, is your fursona is a mascot of some sort. You'll usually see this with fursuit makers, um, people who sell at cons, and so their fursona is them, but it's a more like disassociated version of their brand identity, and so this fursona usually has some representation of their character or brand. So generally, a fursona is a character, um, and it's associated with you, but you know, it doesn't have to be you exactly, and so there's quite a few definitions. And so you might think, that's a lot of information. Um, what's the point of having a persona? And so that's a great question. Um, I think personas are really cool in that they, they can be deeply personal with some folks and very casual for others. Um, while I did mention mascots in the last slide, I do think that personas, in a way, are sort of mascots for everyone in the fandom. You know, your persona is sort of a way for you to signal to others um, who you are, um, how you want to be seen, 
and uh, just give others sort of a vibe about who you are, for lack of a better word. <laughs> it's sort of like a visual vibe check. <laughs> and so, uh, one of the beautiful things about the fandom, I think, is that people are able to either shed or honor their identities through the personas. Um, I know quite a few people who are native, and they have like traditional tribal tattoos on the personas, which is super cool. Um, I know some people who are, I, I, for example, am transgender, and my persona is non-binary, and it's been super cool to have sort of that physical limitation I have on my person be lifted through my persona. And so I think persona's gonna be deeply liberated. Um, I think it's really cool also, you know, I know a lot of cisgender people who just have personas of the opposite gender for no reason at all, just besides, like, it's fun. And so I think personas give you the chance to be someone who you're not in real life. And so I think that's like a really cool exploratory experience that quote unquote normies don't really get that often. And so I think personas are something that uh, we should honor and really take advantage of. Let's see. Um, some people have multiple personas. Um, that is maybe confusing for some people. You're like, okay, why would I want multiple personas? I'm one person, you know? Um, and I think for some people it's, you know, different parts of their lives, um, different parts of their personality. Uh, one, for, uh, one Sona is not first compatible, we're going to get into that later, oh my god. Um, uh, maybe it's different species, you know, Pokey Sonas are a huge thing for a lot of people, and usually their Pokey Sona is not their main Sona. Um, sometimes it is, for example, Three Who's Coming Later has an Arcanine Persona. Um, and yeah, so there's no limit on the number of Personas you can have, that's my point of view, some might disagree. Um, I think you should have as many pers uh, Personas as you want to, and I, yeah, thank you. And I think you can connect to different personas in different ways. Um, some people have personas uh, for safer work only stuff, and then they have a persona for not safer work stuff. Um, there's a lot of options. And so what I'm trying to say is, don't think you're limited to one persona only. There's a lot of options, and you should absolutely take advantage of them. Because the furry fandom is about having fun, showing yourself off in whatever way you want to. And um, yeah, so don't limit yourself. Um, I think getting art, is a fan, big part of the fandom. Um, we love our artists. Uh, anyone here an artist? I'm an artist. Cool, love it, yes. And so, um, yeah, having a persona means you can get art of yourself, which is so cool. Um, whether it's, you know, supporting friends with uh, their, your money and pushing your friends, getting art that expresses your hobbies, um, or just getting like really cute stuff, it's great. And so I think having a persona allows you to have like personal art, which is fantastic. Um, my persona, if you are curious, all right, can I have a drum roll, please? All right, thank you. So, uh, this is my persona when I was 13 years old. And so I know I said I joined the fandom in 2018, that is true. Um, but before I joined the fandom, I was an avid Warrior Cats fan. Oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so, um, I designed... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, this is Reed, our guest panelist. Hi, Reed. Hi. Give a round of applause for Reed, everyone. And so, uh, over the years, and I, this is part of why I really wanted to do this panel, is I've had uh, friends since I was 13 years old, I'm 21 now. Um, that's a very long time to have one character. And so here's Ren in 2014. Um, they moved from Feral to Anthro, so you see that Warrior Cat influence fading quite a bit. And then, uh, so the reason I include this guy is because when I was 13, I watched the movie Wolf Children, absolutely loved it. Um, I wanted Ren to look exactly like this guy from Wolf Children. And so um, you can see that influence for sure. Um, if we go back here, you know, it's a little bit obvious. And so this is written in 2017, oh. and they're beginning to look a little bit different. Um, you begin to see their tail marking that stayed. Um, I stuck with those goddamn gauges for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Um, I just wanted to be cool. I think gauges were really big in 2016, 2017 in furry art. Um, and so, who knows? Wings, I thought they looked cool. Ren was beginning to change a lot. I was 16 or 17, you know? Really big year for me. Um, thigh markings. You see those appear finally, um, and those stay until the present day, which is exciting. Here's Ren, I think in 2018. This is a ref done by Fabu Kona. Thank you, Fabu Kona, for the art. 
Um, yes, uh, still stuck with the gauges, but the markings are beginning to get a bit more clean. This is written in 2019. This is what they look a bit closer to what they look like now. I took the previous belly marking and then I moved it to make it smaller. And also, I'm going to saturate their blues. I will get to why later. And this is Ren today. Um, so, almost nine years with this little bat. Oh, sorry, pardon my language, this cat. <laughs> so, um, yes, I have to be careful about that. Um, and so, they've had multiple iterations. And so, this is nine years of development. So. Making a persona, that's what y'all came for. Let's get into it. Um, the time has come. And so, when I was doing this panel, um, definitely not crunching it last night, um, I was thinking about should I do a celebrity? Should I make up a person? And I decided to take a combo of both. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with the account Make Up a Guy on Twitter. <laughs> but I decided to take this guy. Um, he's a guy who stays up overnight before pulling in gotcha games because Daft Punk led them to believe that that's how you get better luck. Um, so I'm using this guy as our dude that we're going to make a persona for, and I'll get back into him later. So, step one picking a species. Um, all this art is art I've commissioned. I'm just using it. So, there's no limit. Um, you can have a goat, a badger, an owl, a Dutch angel dragon, also known as a dad. Dad, you came back after all these years? Question mark, question mark? Yeah. Um, forgive that joke. <laughs> forgive that joke. Um, anyway, and so picking a species, I think, is the one of the most fun parts of making a persona. How to pick a species. All right, let's get into it. So there are two primary ways to go about this. This image is literally just for fun. Don't pay too much attention to it. I'm paying attention. Okay, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> so picking your favorite animal is one way that people do it. Um, this can be fun because you can combine favorite animals. You know, some people have multiple favorite animals. Hybrids are super cool. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, you could do a fantasy species. You could be a dragon. You could be a unicorn. You could be an alien species. Um, you can pick two animals, three animals, animals of the same species. For example, let's just say you really like the coloration of a tabby cat, but you want a snow leopard, and so you do a snow leopard with tabby markings. Super fun. Um, or you could do a chimera, which is super cool. Or you could do a dragon and a wolf or something, you know? Um, I think picking your favorite animal seems, uh, some people might say it's boring. I think it's a super fun way to do it. Um, or you can pick an animal you relate to. That's what I did. So goats are actually my favorite animal, not cats, surprisingly. Um, but I chose a cat as my primary persona because I have a personality that matches more of a cat. Um, I'm lazy. I, I like to lay in the sun. I'm really picky with people I get close to, but once I've like gotten close to a someone, like I will not leave them alone. Um, I'm a pretty solitary person. I love salmon. Salmon is one of the great loves of my life. Um, I think about salmon sushi on a daily basis. And so I thought cat was a very fitting animal. Um, notably, I was influenced by warriors. I will say that that is important. Um, let's see. My good friend Stark, who's here today, love Stark, hi, um, made this note that um, one really fun way to kind of find an animal that matches your personality is to imagine yourself as a cartoon character and then think about how people would describe you, like your three main traits if you were a cartoon character. And so really boiling yourself down and then working from there, thinking about what animals match this. Let's just say you're really shy, um, you, you know, don't like the light, and you know, uh, you really like meat. So maybe you're like a nocturnal carnivorous animal and you could go from there. And so I think really just boiling it down can really help. And again, hybrids also apply here, you know? Maybe sometimes you're outgoing, sometimes you're reserved. You could pick like a really social animal like a crow and a more solitary animal and then go from there. So yeah, lots of options. Um, hybrids are super cool, original species are a thing. So on the, one second, I have to remember directions, right? That is a hybrid between, I think it's like a dog and a shark, right? Yeah. Uh, is they're left. Oh, they're left. My bad. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's like a dog and a shark, so that's a hybrid, which is really cool. There's a lot of shark hybrids in the fandom. You'll see there's a lot. And then on the, the are right. They're right. They're right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have an airplane dragon, which is an original species. Very cool. 
They're so cute. Yeah, and so yeah, it's an example of maybe something that's not fully animal, but it has like some kind of mecha thing in it. So yeah, you can get really creative. Um, so once you have a species, identity stuff, um, it really depends. Um, a lot of people think that you have to have a persona that matches your identity. It has to have the same gender, same sexuality. I disagree. Um, I think you can do whatever you want. I think you're gonna hear that a lot from me this panel. Um, I'm a big advocate of doing whatever you want and then making other people get used to it. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, plenty of cisgender people have sonos of the opposite gender for whatever reason, um, or sonos that are a different sexuality. Um, and I think sonos can allow you to explore new identities in a healthy way. Um, or you can have a sona that matches your identities. My persona, like me, is non-binary and bisexual, love it. And so, um, yeah, and that can be a way for me to kind of like honor my experience and be like, yeah, that's what I do, that's what my son does. So it really depends on you. I don't think there's any proper way to do it. Personality also dependent on you. Um, some people have personas that are just cute. They have no personality at all. <laughs> just like me, um, that's a joke. Okay, uh, and so, your persona could also have a lot of personalities. Some people have pages and pages of lore written about their personas, which is really impressive. Um, and so, again, it depends on you. I will say, um, I, like I just said, do whatever you want, but, not but, and, um, for the sake of connecting with the character, it may be wise um, to have one or two consistent personality traits. Also, if you have like consistent themes or personality traits for a character, you have the bonus of having art that is thematic. And so you can have you know multiple pieces of art that sort of line, align with a character. And so maybe you're on Twitter and you have pictures of your per, uh, persona plastered all over your profile, and people will go through your Twitter and they'll say, oh, this person's sona like has a lot of art of them partying or golfing or you know, looking happy. So this person probably likes to party or golf or be happy. And so I think that, um, you know, personas are sort of a signaler. So you could, um, you know, have a consistent theme if you wanted to. And I think it's really helpful for giving other people a vibe of like who you are. And that's my uh, take on that. I'm gonna show my Badger character. And so for my Badger character, they're an alternate sona of mine. I also have multiple personas. And I was thinking about, you know, what I wanted to express with that sona. And I'm generally very happy, very outgoing, I'm very upbeat, but there are times when I can be really grumpy. And so I selected to make him sort of a grumpy character. He's gruff, um, even when he's feeling good, he's a little bit more serious. And so I have art like this, where he's looking a bit, you know, he's flustered, but he's still looking a little bit more serious. Um, here's him looking really cool, but you know, he's still, you know, very like relaxed. He's not like super upbeat. Um, here's him looking grumpy with a pride flag, you know. Um, I got this in June, fun. And so yeah, um, I think thematic art can be, it does have benefits. Um, markings, okay, um, this is the hefty part of the panel. Um, markings are a very critical part of any OC. Um, they signal vibe, things about yourself, they can match an aesthetic. Um, I will say, markings do not need to be complex to be memorable. That is the number one thing that people will tell you, and I think they're wrong. I think people always say like, oh, like an OC can be super boring if they're like a gray wolf with a white stomach. And it's true that there are a lot of very mm, traditional gray wolves in the fandom, but I think there are ways to make very simple and very traditional designs memorable. It just depends on how you do it. Um, so yeah, I think complex designs are great, and they can be really beautiful and memorable, but also don't feel like you need to do something really um, colorful or like a lot of markings at once to be, you know, um, to have people remember you. Um, I do want to say this is not a design panel, um, and so I'm not a professional character designer. That's not what I do. Um, I can, I will be giving like a few notes and this is just me as an artist and someone who has designed characters in the past, but um, generally I think, I don't think this con does, but most cons have like a professional character designer do a panel on that, and so I just wanna differentiate. So don't, my word is not the word of God. Um, you know, don't take everything that I say that seriously when it comes to design, everything else, write it down, memorize it, um, it's really good. So, all right, notes on designs. Um, this, so my persona, this is another photo, has a very simple design, um, and I wanted to do that partially because I'm really lazy, and uh, 
policy because I, you know, I'm not a very complicated person. I'm very straightforward, and so I wanted something that kind of represented that. Um, I think I've been told by quite a few people that they are memorable. Generally, people, when they see my persona, recognize it. And even though, the, though they don't have a lot of markings, part of it is, one, the hairstyle. Um, that hair, you know, most uh, personas in the fandom have like this single tuft of hair. They don't have like a whole head of hair going on. So that's one thing. Um, we have the diamonds. We have a consistent marking going around, so that's memorable. Um, they generally have a very consistent theme. They're very upbeat, very outgoing. All the art of them is very happy. And I mean, you're not going to be able to see, the, see this very well here in the back, but on my badge, we have you know them looking very excited, you know. And so, um, yeah. Left side, yes. And so, yeah. Um, I will say, you know, I'm biased when it comes to saying that simple characters can be memorable, but you know, a lot of people have told me that. They see my persona and they recognize it. So maybe I'm doing something right. Um, so I'm part of the school of art that says do whatever you want um, when it comes to designing a character. Complementary colors are a thing. Um, I'm not going to get into it. Imagine a color wheel. You pick one color. You pick the opposite color. It's complementary. It's very, it's very basic. Um, this will make your character probably look good. Um, there's, way, there's ways to do it. Honestly, I think if it looks good to you, and you show it to a friend, and your friend says, that looks good, you're fine. Um, and honestly, if a character is quote unquote ugly, I promise you someone will like it. If you like it, that's what matters. Um, color theory, not gonna get into it, will say certain colors have certain associations. If you have an all red character, people might think that your character is a little bit angry sometimes. Um, you can reverse that, it might take some work. Um, if you have an all blue character, people will think your character is a sad little guy. Obviously not the case here. Um, it just takes a little bit of a consistent theme and you can do it. But yes, um, color theory is a thing. You might need to keep that in mind. It's really not that deep though, um, to be quite frank. Um, let's see, markings, yes. Okay, markings. Overall, um, markings can be messy sometimes, I would say. Um, there are no rules when it comes to markings. Um, keep in mind that if you have a lot of markings on your character or a lot of spots or a lot of stripes, that will make commissions and fursuits cost more. Um, most of the time, I would say. Spot tax, yep. We have um, two experience, experienced people with the spot tax. Not fun all the time. Um, some, you know, especially if you want to get your fursuit, or to your fursuit made into a fursuit, you have to think about markings and think about, can someone actually sew this? Um, in recent years, there have been some really crazy fursuits. Um, crazy, I mean, crazy in a good way. Um, you know, the markings have been insane. But you have to remember, you know, that does require a certain amount of labor, and so you will have to save up if you want something really, you know, like an elk dragon for a suit, um, or, you know, somebody who's known for doing, like, a really intense marking. But um, honestly, overall, have fun. Someone will like your character because it is yours, nobody else's. Um, being yourself, um, I'm trying to think of how to say this. If you are yourself, someone will like you. Yeah. Um, being genuine, gets you very far in life. I think that goes for personas. Um, there's nothing I love more than a simple gray wolf persona with a little arm stripe or whatever. And then someone says, this is my persona, um, stone the wolf. And he represents me because of this. And it makes me happy because that's them. That's what represents them. And it makes them happy, and generally, you know, um, somebody might say it's boring. I love it because it's something that is truly them and it's genuine. And I think that's the most beautiful part of making a persona is representing yourself. And so, let's get a little bit more funny. I'm going to go back to the guy that we were talking about. Do you guys remember him? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to revisit him, and so we're going to start making this guy a persona. So let's give him a species. So um, I'm gonna go not with the favorite uh, um, favorite animal thing because I don't know this guy, I don't know his favorite animal, and so we're gonna choose traits that we know about him from this tweet. So one, we know he stays up late. Two, we know he's kind of dumb. Three, um, maybe a little bit energetic because he's staying up late to play gotcha games, so obviously um, he has something driving him forward. And four, he's endearing. I think he's funny. And so I was thinking about animal, stays up late, 
not super intelligent, maybe moves a lot, very fast, and so I picked a bat. Um, definitely not an owl, I think owls are more of an intelligent vibe, and so, bat. Yes, and so here's this bat I drew. I'm a very talented artist, as you can see. And so, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, and so I chose a uh, cool color because um, I associate this guy with nighttime. So he's um, kind of this like blue, purple thing. It kind of looks like the selection color if you uh, use side of her. Um, and so nighttime, we're gonna give him star markings uh, because this guy wants to have something that kind of separates his uh, bat from other purple bats out there. There's quite a few actually. And then, um, oh, a tummy marking. Um, you know, so tummy markings are actually quite common. Um, honestly, if you look at like fursona markings, or like if you look at the animal that you're trying to design a character after, or if you look at like people's fursonas, I mean, don't copy someone's fursona, but generally, if you take like five fursonas and you say, oh, I like what they did with like this marking, I like what they did with these colors, you can kind of get an idea for what you'd like to do for your own. Or you could hire an artist. A lot of artists will help you make a persona. Um, I'm gonna get into that in a bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, he wants yellow accents. Accent colors can be really nice. Um, this is me using the complementary color thing I mentioned earlier. Yellow complements purple, blue, whatever. And so, fantastic, beautiful. Some accents on the wings, you know, keeping it simple. Oh, and there's a little finishing touch right there. Um, and so yeah, it's a little bit angry. Maybe he's about to commit some crimes, we don't know. Um, and so there we go. Um, a very basic, yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very basic, um, you know, not super crazy design, utilizing accent colors, yeah. And so example part two. So this is a character I designed personally. Um, I helped my friend Sai design um, his character Dawn. And so I was given the prompt of uh, colors like a sunrise, um, I was given a personality, oh, sorry, a swear word. Um, so sweet go-getter, but takes no bull, you know, bull crap, there we go. Um, and then a well-balanced body type, yeah. And so um, this is the character I ended up designing. Oh, thank you, this is art from like 2019. <laughs> and so what I did is I actually took a picture, I was like pastel sunrise, and then I like, color picked from that photo. And then I think I was given also um, a species, I was given Aussie, and so I looked up pictures of Aussies and I was like, okay, what are like general markings that Aussie, you know, um, Australian shepherds have? And so generally, you know, they have white legs, um, a white stomach, some kind of white facial marking, and then like a darker back, um, darker back or neck, and then a uh, tail. And so yeah, I kind of copied those markings that you, prim uh, you primarily see. I gave them little heart shapes on the knees because I don't know, it's like feminine and cute. Who knows? Um, I was, but generally I, I just went with my gut instinct and that's usually how um, I think it'll, it often goes for people. Um, yeah, and so we're gonna have two other people talk about how they design their personas in a second. Um, connecting to a character, and so this is the fun part. Um, I think a lot of people uh, really struggle with connecting to their personas. Um, I think often the number one thing I hear when I talk about making personas is, oh, like I have this persona and I have no connection to them whatsoever. Um, and so generally, um, I think I'm pretty well versed on the subject. I've had my persona for nine years um, and I am still very connected to this character. And so I think for me, part of it was, I started off with it being heavily inspired by a character from a franchise. And so at first I was like, okay, this is like not my persona, this is an OC I have. And then over time, um, I began to integrate aspects of me into this character, for example. I wear glasses. Ren began to wear glasses. Um, I stand on two legs. Ren began to stand on two legs. That was a big thing, um, as they are no longer a kitty cat, they are an anthropomorphic character. Um, oh, like, I have these hobbies, Rin ha have these hobbies, and so slowly over time, Rin became more like me. And so Rin changed as I changed, which was super cool. And so Rin, ha uh, Rin has essentially grown up with me. I made them when I was 13, and so that's my entire teenage and adult life. Um, and so I think part of um, connecting with the character is remembering that um, change is okay. Um, and so you can either, that's like a character's personality, or maybe it's markings, like a character isn't like as exciting for you anymore. Um, and I think, for example, I'm gonna go back, watch your eyes. 
<laughs> All right. So this is back in 2019 before the pandemic. Um, actually, let's start here. So in 2018, Ren had more of a uh, dark blue color for their hair and their tail. I think I generally was uh, more drawn to black and like monochromatic colors. And then I think uh, once I started college, I began to you know talk to people more, began to get out my shell more, and I thought, hmm, um, I guess a persona that's most basically black and white doesn't really represent sort of an outgoing personality. Like, what can I do to make them more visually interesting or to communicate like a more friendly vibe? And so. I uh, gave them a more like deep, like a more saturated blue. It's more visually interesting. And so suddenly they went from kind of like this, I'm gonna say it, boring kind of black and like a dark navy blue and like gray almost to this blue character. And I think that was really helpful for me. And then now in uh, 2021, they've gotten eye markings, very exciting for me. And um, I also finally uh, gave them that diamond chest marking which I think was a long time coming. And so, yeah, I think not being afraid of change is crucial to kind of having a persona you connect to and you keep for a long time, which, you know, isn't everyone's goal. Um, some people have multiple, person multiple personas over the span of like several years, and that's also okay. You know, um, not you're not always gonna have a character that you keep forever, and that's also all right. And I think I highly encourage people, you know, if you don't like a character anymore, you don't, you know, it's a, it's a digital, character or you know you can always move on and no one's gonna get upset at you for changing your persona so yeah don't be afraid and so I think connecting with a character you know think about what makes you you um, which gets back into the boiling yourself down think about what do you represent or what do you want to represent um, thinking about who you are these are big questions by the way sorry for putting this on you at I think Friday at 5 p.m. <laughs> um, and yeah um, think about what traits are core to you and sort of um, what do you think you could do to demonstrate those traits in a persona. And so now we're gonna get into fursuit compatibility. Um, we love our crazy animal characters, we love the colors they have, and sometimes those colors are not makeable in fur. And, um, or, you know, we have leather markings, and those markings are not possible. And so I'm gonna have two of my friends speak who have fursuits of their personas and they're gonna talk about the design process, um, what they kept in mind when making their persona, and um, what it was like to have their persona made into a fursuit. And so we're gonna start with my lovely friend Felix. Um, and this is Felix's persona up here. And yeah, Felix, take it away. Okay. Thank you so much. So I've had this persona, and he has not really changed in design for about seven years. Um, some of the things that I kept in mind while making him was what he represents about me. Um, I have multiple personas and they all share a couple key traits that helps me connect with them. So one thing you might notice about him, kind of small up there, but he has kind of dark rings around his eyes and he's got that kind of raccoon mask thing going on. And I also have those. <laughs> And it made me really embarrassed for a long time until I started incorporating it into my persona designs. And now it feels like something that I can kind of, I like about myself. I like my persona, I love how he looks, and it's helped me a lot with my, with that. And then the other thing he represents is my gender identity. Um, I'm trans and, <clears throat> sorry, he's not exactly trans pride colors, but he's very close. <laughs> Um, he's kind of a trans pride sunset theme with his colors, and um, those are two things that are, sunsets and trans pride are both very important to me, so I really wanted to incorporate them uh, into his character, so, yeah. Alright, um, and now we're going to have Reed speak about their experience making their persona. There's Reed's uh, concept art. I'm afraid I'm going to turn off this mic or something, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh good, yes, thank you. Yeah, Hi. The mic. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna, it's really nice and easy. Um, it wasn't, just because we had the base idea, it doesn't mean it was easy to actually make it into a fursuit. Um, so, actually it was, it was really challenging. Um, orange is one of those really hard to get colors, for fur. Um, we uh, ended up selecting this really bright orange, which kind of leans more into the tune sensibilities that I had. Um, I would say that I spent a lot of my time designing the character uh, and the shapes, actually. I, I talk about this all the time when I'm drawing, is uh, focus on the shapes, because having a silhouette that stands out 
uh, really makes the character stand out. And uh, I'm very lucky that I was able, that I lived with my first maker at the time, so we spent a lot of time um, like fixing and detailing the silhouette. So it's like really characteristic. It looks like a little cartoon, cartoony critter, I would like to say. Um, sometimes. When I was when I was making this ref, I actually drew it over like five times. It was agonizing, <laughs> and it was it was hard because uh, some of the markings don't quite translate well. So like the back has some stripes, and I actually had the Pokemon Go 3D model, and I was able to like kind of bend it to see like what would it would look like if it was upright standing, and the markings looked terrible. Like they just did not work, and so um, we ended up, or I ended up doing about three different iterations of the back and we just kind of decided on a little X shape because when you pull the shoulders back on the character, they kind of just made an X shape already, so we just kind of simplified it. Which kind of leads into another thing. Um, if and when you're making markings, and it's, sometimes you kind of have to reevaluate, like, okay, is this gonna communicate clearly? And sometimes it's better to go in there and kind of like simplify it. Maybe it still has those core ideas, but just maybe remove some that kind of muddles up the colors or something. And so I spent a lot of time kind of just like redoing exactly where the seams would be, where the little stripes would go and, and that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I basically focus mostly on portraying this character as cartoon as possible. And we really wanted to push that, that sensibility into this first loop. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. <laughs> Just on the topic of simplifying markings, um, you can also see on my fursuit over here, it's always got his butt out, um, having a spotted character, you know, you got the spot tags. So something I did was I, for one, I give artists artistic liberty when defining my spots and the colors. I give both of those artistic liberty to whoever's making it. And a lot of times the plots end up bigger. So you kind of see the difference between my actual reference sheet and the suit itself. Um, those spots are far simplified um, on the actual fursuit. So be kind to your fursuit maker. <laughs> yeah, and with that, um, we have finished the panel. Um, we have, yeah. We, we, Ever. Um, we have 22 minutes left, and so with that, um, I'm happy to take questions if anyone has any questions. Um, comments are also welcome. Okay, yes, hello, you in the back. Oh, I was just wondering, um, have you noticed any recent trends in persona design? Like over the last couple of years, have some markings or species become a lot more popular than they were in the past? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, Felix, not to call you out, there was a yin boom like two years ago, <laughs> and it's lasted since then. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, I've definitely seen trends. I. Again, this is my personal opinion. Um, a lot of I've definitely seen like negative criticism of people who follow trends when they make their personas. Like, oh, like everyone's doing this nowadays. But I think it's cool. I think it's really cool that people kind of like d are drawn to this thing for whatever reason. And so, you know, for example, um, I know a lot of people who made the personas back in 2018 and then kept them because it actually really worked for them. And so, I've definitely noticed trends. I think also like gauges used to be a huge thing, like the piercings, you know, with like the, yeah, and so I think those used to be a huge thing. Yes, totally. Every time a new Jurassic Park movie comes out, yeah. dinosaur <laughs> persona skyrockets. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so yeah, I think that's definitely, yeah, or a new video game comes out and then everyone's like, oh, this cool animal character from this video game, interesting. Um, yeah, let's see, any other questions? Uh, yes, pink, pink sweater. Thank you. It's my favorite spot. It's really cute. <laughs> this is a question for Reed. Uh, you should probably hand him the microphone. <laughs> um, did you consider a bunch of different species before landing on Arcanine? And by the way, your suit, I know I said this already, but it's adorable. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so interestingly enough, I've, as, as you would expect, I've been into Pokemon for a super long time. Um, but I was always dead set on Arcanine. I, it was like, I saw that, that guy one day, and I was like, that's the one for me, for sure. I can't blame you, because they're so huggable. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, so, you know, when it actually comes to, like, you know, the idea of, like, blending a bunch of different characteristics, um, I think that this character has a lot of what I care about. So, you know, to the point, they seem unhuggable, they're, they're really, you know, fluffy, they have, like, big tufts everywhere. I think that's really interesting. It adds for, again, part of an interesting silhouette. Also has stripes. Um, stripes are cool, but they're not like 
totally tiger stripes, but the tiger stripes get really intense really fast. They're just like really simplified stripe shapes. The color just rocks. It's just like a bright orange, and the main, of course, is yellow. So it's like, it's got like a lot of like good, interesting, a bunch of different you know, ideas based into it. And so it just it kind of pops to my eye. I think it pops to a lot of people's eyes too, especially because it's so bright. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I like it. <laughs> this is a good, fluffy little man. <laughs> I should have you know that you're one of my Wow. That's so adorable. Oh, thank you. How could you not see that face? Yeah, I mean, how could you see that face and not smile? It's true. I just want to see that you guys smile. Um, <laughs> any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Um, what, so, what experience do you have um, whether it's friends or, I guess, like, what advice would you have to somebody with a bunch of invisible disabilities and would like to incorporate some of them into their conversation. Absolutely. Oh, that's first year. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So I have, sorry, I have some invisible disabilities as well, actually. I left the first Android Northwest in an ambulance once. Um, and I actually do have that incorporated into my fursuit as well. You might not notice it. This is kind of stupid, but I love him, so it doesn't matter. But I have a heart condition. I have heart problems, and there's hearts all over my my persona, and in his eyes, and like like the sparkles in his eyes are hearts. He's got the hearts all over. He's got a heart on his chest, and I feel like it's kind of like a representative of my thing, even if it's just to me. But it also makes me um, hopeful. It's kind of like a protective charm to keep my heart going smoothly when I'm at a con like this. So I I don't do that again. <laughs> Um, let's see, I think, I'm not sure if we talked about like, representing a, a design, but also, um, I'm hard of hearing, and so when I'm pushing my full suit, I'm planning on asking for ear vents, not for ventilation, but so I can hear better. And so, I'll absolutely also communicating that to your maker can be very helpful. Um, and we had another, another question. Yes, hello. Yeah, more of a kind of comment you were asking about how connect with your persona and one thing that I found was always important to me, I've had the same persona since like 2010 and I projected a lot of the stuff that I wanted as a like 13, 14 year old and a lot of those ideals and those things that I wanted to become, my persona was a DJ before me, he was a, you know, uh, confident and outgoing and all these things that I wanted and I kind of grew into him um, and he kind of grew into me. Uh, and that's something that I've always found like a lot of people project aspects of themselves, but also things that they want, things that they're striving for. Absolutely, uh, yeah. And also, super cool, congrats on being a DJ. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, it, was, it was cool that I grew into it and he was that first. That always felt interesting, yeah. Yeah, um, any other comments, questions? Hello? Hey, uh, so I have a character that I'm really hesitant to redesign, but looking at them has gotten kind of stale. Do you have any advice about where to start when it comes to redesigning a character, especially in like steps before I dive into the redesigning it for baby? Um, absolutely. I literally just did that this year. Um, I hate change. Um, I, I know it's all about like embrace change, but I personally very much struggle with change. And so what I did is I actually handed my persona off to several friends and said, hey, try redesigning Ren. Send it back to me. Um, he thinks five. And so they did that, and then I saw what I liked about what people had changed. And I thought, okay, what can I change that will freak me out? And so I started with eye markings. And maybe next year I'll be on stretch, who knows. Um, I think also that um, you can also hire an artist that's something a lot of artists do redesign commissions. Do other of you have anything to say to the next? So my first, well, my main action is several different color palettes because I kind of went through a similar phase where I was like, I don't want to spice things up, but I don't do. He was brown for a long time. Same exact markings, just a more fun color palette, and it ended up clicking with me a lot more. And um, now I've had this pink monstrosity for a long time. So. Sometimes just switching it up like that can be fun, and I also totally suggest getting other artists to do their interpretation. And that's also why I do artistic liberty when I commission people. I always want to see what they're going to add. And for this art piece specifically, 
um, Rowan, our friend who did it, actually did the eye markings way different than I used to do them, and that ended up clicking with me a lot, and now I do my eye markings like that. So, um, when you start getting feelings of like, hmm, what, what can I do to change it or do this, I think that your gut is probably trying to tell you something, and it's important to listen to that, and then I think you can kind of lean into sometimes what the problem is, so, uh, you can try slowly experimenting with like maybe adjusting the pattern, maybe adjusting the feature, maybe adding some more shape or body in a certain spot or somewhere before really deciding to dig and, you know, redraw the whole thing or to commission out of it. But also, again, you know, as Chrissy said, uh, just having somebody go over it, like an artist go over it, with a, maybe a much more refined eye and maybe even asking them, like, hey, what would you do in this space? What do you think could be better? That could, that right there, right there, and it might be worth the money for it. So, absolutely, look into an artist. Oh, I, yeah. Sorry, one other thing on my, my thing. So his little eyebrow, his little, well, not the actual eyebrow, he has like a white eyebrow marking, like that's above his little thing. That was also some artistic liberty thing somebody else did that I decided to keep. So, some of my favorite aspects of this character design weren't even my idea. <laughs> okay, do we have any, any questions, comments? Uh, we still have uh, 13 minutes, or... Uh... Yes, hello. So for character attachment, like feeling like your persona is like fits yourself. Um, I find that a lot of people come up with really detailed backstories for their characters. And I struggle with that with like the uh, like just figuring them out what who the character is and if they're just the same as me or if they're their own thing. And I was wondering how you like get around to figuring that out. Yeah, I think it really depends on the type of person you are. Um, I have friends that intense lore helps them connect with the character more. Um, for me, and like pages and pages of lore actually kind of isolates me from a character. Um, so it really depends on what you, which I know is kind of reflecting your question back at you. But um, yeah, it really depends on what the type of person you think you are. Um, for me, I think having a persona that is a university student like I am, mm. and it shares like, some traits, but then, oh, they also do magic. I can't do that, I wish I could. <laughs> and so I think um, just starting with like, if you want to have like, a base foundation, I would say start with like, oh, this character is me, and then begin to branch out and see what's comfortable. And if you're feeling like, oh, this isn't really clicking for me, um, try a different approach is what I would say, yeah. So um, when I first started getting Art Don't Agree, I actually, um, I kind of did like a world build for him too. Um, and so I, I, I get where you're coming from, where it's, um, I think there's an important thing to differentiate. I think that some people design their personas in different ways. So some people really do like that reflection of themselves. And some people like to dig into the lore, so they like the fantasy of it, so to say. So you would probably be more into this as a fantasy which is cool. Um, I, I think that I first placed Reed in the world uh, before I started to do that. So um, I have a lot of art of him, almost like a, like a pit fighter, like an adventure. Um, it's interesting, there's like two variations of Reed. You'll find cartoon Reed and you'll find like adventure Reed is what I just call him. Um, but place him in a world and uh, really figure out like what that world means and what excites you about that world. So when I was placing him in that world, so to say, I imagined him like, he's a rough and tough dude, gets into sword fights, probably fighting in a bar, he's probably jumping into caves that he shouldn't be jumping into. So that would affect a lot of things about him, like what would he be wearing? If he's not going to be wearing a trench coat or like that kind of stuff, especially if he's jumping in caves and stuff, he's probably wearing something light and loose. Um, I also think about some sensibilities like, okay, so if you're a fur character, you're probably not going to be wearing jackets anyways, especially if you're running around in deserts and stuff like that. So like, you can think about little things like that. Um, you can think of like aesthetics, you can think of like time. So like I really love Greco Roman art. I love to see that like, you know, gladiator aesthetic. I really, really love that. So I incorporate a lot of elements of history as well as his design. And the story, well, that's the fun part. You can just be like, he did this crazy thing and this is how it happened. You can kind of just dig into that. Um, if you really wanted to find meaning into it, I would say find a way to connect that maybe to one of your struggles or something you're kind of working through right now with those kinds of things, or maybe kind of use that to solve a problem for you, and then you'll find deeper meaning in it. To build off what Reed just said as well, something that I think helps connect you to a character is to 
put something that you struggle with into it and something that you're proud of. My character has an, a feature, like my eyes, that I struggled with, and the trans crowd, something that I'm proud of, and that's something that helped me connect to it in a far deeper way than just having a character that's the ultimate idealized version of yourself. Yeah, um, any other questions, anyone? Are, oh, yes, hello. Like, I don't think, I, I don't see other, like, you can use the, like, anime and manga and comics and novels and stuff, and, like, there's no reason if you're not, like, publishing something in your end, you can't use that as a basis to build off your character. Exactly. Like, I use, yeah. uh, like, I'm a big into d d so when I went to redesign my persona, I went and, like, well, how can I use, like, the fantasy I love to, like, add to this character? And it's really, like, made it, like, much deeper connected to me. Exactly. I mean, my persona started off as a cat version of an anime character I really liked. So I absolutely know what you mean. Yeah, that's great. Um, sure. Just something I thought of earlier, but uh, I think a great way to design a character is to find someone who is a character that you really like, and then think about what you like about that character and what you want to incorporate into your own. And sometimes you can even contact these people and be like, hey, I love your character. I want to make something similar and incorporate these ideas. Can you help me so that they're not too similar? Azu-T and I have a little brother character that's like kind of looks like theirs, but he's a little demon devil guy, and we designed that together because I love the shape and overall look of his persona and fursuit, but I really didn't want to copy or steal any of his designs, and so we had a really good time, and I made a friend just uh, working together to build something we both liked. Absolutely. Alright. Um, thank you for coming to my panel. Um, we're out eight minutes early. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, also, we're going to have a huge round of applause for my guest panelists. I really appreciate them coming in. Uh, um, you have been released. Be free. <laughs>